All right, let's go. Ayo, we're three hot guys sharing our opinions because we're special and different. Gold medals, we're winning. Can't help it if we're burdened by our intellect. You can play checkers while we pretend we know the rules to chess. The council has spoken, and we are the chosen. Your nose is broken because I broke it. Ouch, this sucks. And welcome back to another episode of Will of the Council. It's your boy, Joseph. I've got Jordan in the booth. That's me. I've got Danny on my mind. No, you don't. Hello. <laughs> yes, I do. What, what? <laughs> <laughs> Me just telling you and your own thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I've got Becky on the ones and twos. How's everybody feeling this week? Uh, my brain. It's a little itchy, <laughs> um, which I think might be... I don't know if it's a side effect, um, but I mm. talked to my dr musk and he said it would be okay <laughs> um i got the new trial uh a program uh, something called a neuro neuro link um i can't say it right now because my it's brain actually doesn't pronounced work right Nerua link sorry, oh sorry, right you know. i'm sorry yeah the programming isn't all there so um <laughs> hopefully it gets fixed it's actually pronounced i am violating an nda <laughs> do not permit me to speak further yeah yeah i don't know um it's uh, it's going okay. All <laughs> I gotta say about this is, uh, oh boy, uh, if you're unfamiliar, we're talking about. I believe today is the first quote unquote quote unquote quote quote unquote quote successful piece of Neuralink news. Uh, Elon's out there today saying that there is one human individual who has a Neuralink who has now gained the ability to control a cursor with it. Mm. Yeah. I want to preface that the that the title is Elon Musk claims Neuralink's first patient implanted with brain chip can m already move a computer mouse with their mind. Oh, that's that's uh, great. Well, hold up. He said that they could move the mouse with their brain. You know, it's possible the Neuralink exploded and now their like actual physical brain is just laying out on the counter. Theoretically, they could pick it up and use it to like manipulate a mouse <laughs> yeah. or a set of sensory. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I will say I'll believe it when I see it. But the other thing I'll say is, boy, what a useless piece of technology. It's, it's so, so funny. Like a significant awesome. amount of the like um, uh, speech and computer motion by way of thought waves type stuff exists for people who are like disabled. Right. That are like paralyzed or something. Um, yeah. But it's so funny being like. What if this was like a consumer product and like the the technology yeah. developed so that Stephen Hawking could like deliver lectures near the end of his life was instead used so that like the most annoying guy on Twitter.com could beam a misspelled crypto scam tweet onto the platform directly. Yeah. It's just beautiful. <laughs> this random <laughs> Neuralink idiot can can retweet nft bot shit with their brain <laughs> that's their superpower <laughs> the breakdancing dad could talk about <laughs> how his uh family he left yeah, is lying utilizing true. only the power of his head but he can't breakdance anymore because he's off center this is we're just describing <laughs> the shittiest nerdiest professor xavier like ever <laughs> <laughs> you put on <laughs> you put on uh what's it called uh oh god i can't remember now Rebecca, I erase this portion where I am just completely exposed uh, for not knowing anything. This is going to kill me. He puts on Rebecca Cerebro, and, and immediately it goes, Charles Xavier, there are ten mutants in your area, and my pussy is in your bio. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> you know, he, he revealed it through his... Um, you know, uh, the very popular and classic Spaces audio oh, good. Um, chat. That's, oh. that's where people found out that, <laughs> that, that <laughs> progress is going well. It's so funny that of all the dog shit products that Twitter's made and then canned, the one that brain genius Elon Musk decided to keep around was the one that everybody hated. Like the unusable, like everybody talking at once Twitch stream. Uh, I I so still bad. I still think the only good thing to ever come out of spaces is that Donald Trump Truth Social post where he's like making fun of Ron DeSantis's campaign launch oh. by like I was making gonna a say fake Ron spaces. I was gonna say Ron DeSantis's campaign launch. I think that was the best thing. To it come was so out of good. Twitter. 
So but when he, he posted like the spaces with like Satan and Adolf Hitler in it. <laughs> yes, Hitler. <laughs> and it, it had it had AI Donald Trump being like, Hitler, you're already dead, and Dick Cheney, you'll be dead soon. <laughs> it's like <laughs> so true. <laughs> Uh, oh man! No, it's uh, it's I I think the uh, uh, Danny, correct me if I'm wrong, but the reason this uh this mm-hmm. came to your mind, uh, was because of probably my favorite tweet on the platform right now, which is a quote tweet of the announcement post for like Neuralink. It has a successful person that can move a computer mouse with their brain or whatever. The person quote tweeting it is like, Elon Musk should not be able to make this claim without going out in public and if it's not true he should get sued for modifying stock or or I can't remember exactly yeah. but like yeah uh, yes for manipulating that's stock that's it for manipulating stock yeah like I was like that's so true like I don't care if it's like oh, this is a publicly traded company and blah 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 like fuck you you're a nerd but like this that's that's very true he should not just be able to say shit like that where is the proof that this is a thing that Neuralink can do. The answer is Exxon not. Mobil <laughs> claims that while drilling, they located the fountain of youth. Yeah, yeah. Stock prices <laughs> soar. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he said progress is good, and the patient seems to have made a full recovery from with what? no <laughs> ill effects that <laughs> we what? are aware oh, of. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. We we put our fingers in our ears and started going la 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 when they started telling us of the green pus oozing from their ears. I liked the tweet, and I thought you were going to reference this one, that was like, this tweet, the like, Elon Musk says first human Neuralink going well, this tweet reads like something you'd find on the ground in like a Resident Evil game <laughs> for like world building purposes. <laughs> so good. Oh my god, that's oh, so man. good. Garden of Ban Ban Research, episode number six, <laughs> patient number four. The patient is responding well to the Gilvanium implant. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I I will say uh, Elon Musk would definitely be a fan of Stinger Flynn. Uh, um, that's so true. <laughs> no, it's it's funny. I really, you know, I feel for this patient because I'm sure it's someone that like either they're like a true believer in Musk, in which case you know whatever happens happens. Good luck. But I'm sure probably it's someone who has like some sort of disability and was like, well, I might as well try this. And you yeah, know they're just gonna yeah. get taken advantage of until this thing goes belly up. So uh, you know, yeah, you do what you gotta. As a fun little uh, bow to wrap this up, uh, I was reading on it, and it's like uh, the article on Mashable is like, in addition to and a link to another article, animal welfare investigations from the U.S. government, Neuralink was recently fined by the U.S. Department of Transportation for violating regulation regarding the transport of hazardous materials. Oh, good. (laughs) Great. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? (laughs) Like, what is going on anymore? I don't know. It's just, like, the the shit with, like, AI. I think the thing that made me, like, doom in the past couple weeks more than anything is the, what is it, the Sora AI, whatever, that makes, like, unbelievably realistic oh, yeah. ai footage and it's like oh we are not equipped it's to over keep up yeah. with this technology <laughs> yeah. yep like we yeah. are fucking doomed like like there was there was an announcement i saw that uh the federal government finally took action against using ai like voice manipulation in scam calls and it's like mm-hmm. oh so we're just now getting to scam calls oh okay okay but uh we're already at the point where we're making fake live footage of people yeah we're it's it's over we're so cooked (laughs) so it's like it's bad for sure it's definitely like the end of human civilization but have you considered that it also will be responsible for the princess jane movie oh yes princess jane show me more tricks it's worth it. Honestly, it's worth it. Rufus, spin it up. <laughs> Do you see they banned my goat? He's not on the platform anymore. No! Yeah. They banned Rufus. They banned my goat. Uh, well, we'll 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 see uh, who's laughing when we all go to see Princess Jane 8 in theaters this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. There there's going to be a Dune style uh popcorn, but it's just going to be Princess Jane's pussy. Dude, <laughs> can we, okay, no. can we get to the fucking no, post? God, God yeah, I hate you. Get to the post. No, not that one. But if you thought that was abnormal to say, let's look at someone who's being slightly abnormal in today's three scenarios. I need Neuralink so that I can blow you up with yeah. my mind. I need you to get Neuralink so you can be blown up with your own mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, if you get Neuralink, I'm going to send a tweet to your head and it's just going to explode. 
it's it's gonna be like <laughs> oh the posts the posts <laughs> all right so what i like about this inaugural am i the asshole post is first off one of the highest rated on the platform currently with 11.2k upvotes uh and it is a title that could only have been dreamed up by the geniuses at http colon slash slash www.reddit.com uh now i want to preface for the the viewers at home joseph yelled in chat do not Look at these. I beamed it to Danny so. and Jordan's uh, Neuralink. Yeah, so the first true. two, yeah. they are going in completely blind, and they are also blind yeah. because of Neuralink use. It's also true. All right. That's true. That's true. So this first one is titled, Am I the Asshole for, quote, throwing a tantrum, end quote, because my child wasn't invited to a child free wedding okay okay, okay. so okay. I, I have Funny, to ask first and foremost uh jordan danny are you familiar with the child free movement uh the child <laughs> free okay about? okay no i'm not familiar what? with the movement i've heard of a child free wedding before like these are pretty common okay the, okay they okay. are uh, they are uh, not that uncommon but on reddit okay child free usually refers to a subreddit and a group of posters on that subreddit who talk like 2007 epic meme lords about how they will never have children and people who are are repugnant. They're, they're always like, I was at the grocery store when a little crotch spawn came up at me oh. and tried to bick oh, his nose dude. in front of me. And I went up to his mom and said, um, why did you decide to procreate, you repugnant Brumplestein? You know, it's uh, it's good stuff. People uh, are so cringe. All right. I hate my. I hate Reddit. All right. I wish they had Neuralink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, yep. you know, if it if it helps, these are going to be the first people who are signing up. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. All right, but let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about this child-free wedding because the concept of a wedding with no kids at it kind of does make sense, right? They're annoying. Sure, sure. All right, so here's what we got. My sister is getting remarried. She wants a very small wedding with only immediate family. Yesterday, we got her wedding invitation, and to my surprise, it said the wedding is child-free and that my child isn't invited. My child is 17, <laughs> going on 18. By the way, my child is the only one under 18 in our family and in the groom's family, so she is the only person being excluded i called my sister <laughs> and asked her is she fucking serious she said i'm sorry <laughs> we've decided we want a child free wedding i told her just say you want a my child free wedding and get it over with because this is exactly what you are doing we got into an argument and she told me to stop throwing a tantrum and that my child doesn't need to be included in everything i told her we won't be attending her wedding and then she called me an asshole for not supporting her. Uh, Danny, do you want to take a crack at this? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, okay. I have, oh, man, this is awesome. This is insane. This person, th this person's sister is a character or caricature of a, of a, like, human. This, this person's like a cartoon. <laughs> they, it's it's unreal. I I think <laughs> the idea that you want a child-free wedding and there are no children except the 17-year-old. One. <laughs> so so it's not a children-free wedding, it's a single child-free wedding. <laughs> and she's like, "Just say you don't want my kid to come." Well, I don't know. I uh... <laughs> This person is an insane I cannot, person. I cannot explain. I mean, you probably heard me. I was roaring with laughter when we got to the next line that was going to say, my child is 17. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you think of something like child-free wedding, it's like we don't want a bunch of little kids there. We want everybody to be able to let loose and have fun. And, like, you know, we're, we're, we're probably going to be partying like crazy. We just don't want a bunch of little kids running around. But the <laughs> the child is seventeen. Like child free does not <laughs> apply to a seventeen year old. It's uh. <laughs> it, what are they gonna do? Like <laughs> like run around and be like, hey, I'm going to college yeah. soon. <laughs> 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 
do you think you could help me with my essay? Oh, yeah. no, the wedding's ruined. <laughs> the wedding's ruined. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so Fuck good. I, I do love, there's just so much going on. It is funny because in a vacuum, it almost makes sense. It's like, yeah, kids are, like, loud. Sometimes they'll cry during, like, really important moments in the ceremony. And you want to be able to remember, like, a day. You know, the thing about weddings is uh, you are allowed to make a bunch of unreasonable requests because it's one of the only times in a lot of people's lives that is about exclusively them. Yep. And, like, I think that I give mm -hmm. people a lot of leeway on ridiculous things that they want for weddings for that reason. Uh, sure. But then you hear that, like, the kid is not a child. They are functionally an adult. Like, they could sign up for military service. And then you hear that, like, there's only one of them. <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny. It's, like, dastardly mean, <laughs> right? Like, this is so insanely mean. Imagine, like, your, you know, your mother's, like, sis, so your aunt, mm -hmm. is like, oh, we don't want you there yeah that's it yeah we want everyone else we don't want you i like that's so mean that's devastating like that's uh, i'd be like mom why does aunt like what is why does she hate, hate me? me yeah <laughs> so there's like some weird stuff going on in the comments too uh the op describes the child as like a little quiet and everyone's like oh is the kid like autistic like are they do they have a, a problem like sitting still for a long time or something and the guy's like no my kids like really well behaved they're just kind of quiet the rest of the family is just weirded out that they're not super social and like oh, yeah i imagine oh, they're not oh. super social because you fucking hate them <laughs> like, yeah Oh, oh my god. god. I would be li i mean this this family member obviously was livid but i would be livid like they're functionally an adult. Like they're they're like they're just they're seventeen years old. They're not a child. I mean they're a kid still. They just got out of high school. But like, come on, this is so like, shitty. This is just so yeah. shitty. And be real. Like if if this was only let's say their birthday was coming up in like a month. Like, what's the difference, right? Like, oh, 30 days, and now they can come? Oh, they're 18, technically. What, oh, are you going to reject them then? Come on. <sighs> That's so lame. What the <laughs> fuck? Uh, there is a... I will say this is the only time on Reddit I've ever seen this happen. Uh, someone posts, I'm convinced Reddit hates kids. They're acting like my daughter is a monster and should be shunned because she's quiet. And the reply goes, I do detest kids, but I think you're right. Your sister was targeting your family specifically, and 17 is not developed me. Hold up. I do detest kids. <laughs> all the comments are, and all the comments for the first time ever on Reddit are like, what do you mean you detest kids? What do you like see a fucking 14 year old in the street? And you're like, that fucking prick. God damn it. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Uh, these people, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm tempted to blame myself and be like, I went through a phase, you know. But I don't think I really went through a phase where I just, like, legitimately hated children. Like, mm -hmm. I think you, yeah, like, because I think you can have moments of being like, oh, man, kids can be sure annoying, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Like, ugh, oh, that's kind but of like, annoying. No, but I don't make not. it my personality to is this hate like, kids. Is this actual ageism? Are we experiencing it right now? I, I <laughs> yeah. think you're right, actually. Like, I'm not kidding. Oh, yeah. I think I, this is legit ageism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my this, God. This it's, sucks. This, it's this is so lame. lame. <laughs> it, it's, it's lame insofar as... like so. But wait. Let, let's complicate this a little more. Um, sure. The woman who is throwing a tantrum, their sister is getting married. Well, it turns out this woman is the sister's maid of honor. No. And the sisters Dude, no. The sisters like I'm going to torch this wedding over you not bringing your 17-year-old with you. You can't bring your 17-year-old almost adult what? to this wedding because I consider them a child. Actually, I just hate them. Like <laughs> Wait, wait. So I just uh, <laughs> yeah, This this woman deserves locker time actually. <laughs> Yeah. I, uh, okay. She's the maid of honor. You're not going to give like a little bit of breathing room for the person 
who's like like the person for you are you serious yeah. you are so important to me in my life i love you you mean so much to me <laughs> that i want you standing by my side when i say yes and and give my you know my life to this other person <laughs> But you're fucking kidding, you little gremlin piece of shit. I don't know about them there. Fuck them. Fuck you, actually. Yeah, fuck that kid. <laughs> you're the little crotch spawn. Yeah. yeah. Ugh, you're little crotch spawn. Ugh, what, is it going to shit in? Yeah. Oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, you're going to have to change their diaper during my wedding? Is it going to cry? <laughs> uh, they're 17. What are you going to little bitch what are you, baby? baby? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, can we talk about how that, like, she said that she threw a tantrum? That's insane to me, right? <laughs> like, for being like, what is the oh, tantrum? The tantrum here is her. The tantrum here is her saying, "What do you mean, child free? It's my child. That's the only one." Yeah, it's no. It's, see, the thing is, tantrum is the operative word here because she views, or, or the 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 woman getting married views her sister also as a child now. So everything she doesn't like is now a child. And shouldn't be at the mm. wedding because it's child free. Mm. <laughs> you get it? Mm. See? How yeah, she's I doing see. It? I see. Yeah, there you go. I figured it out. Uh, not for nothing. This is also, it turns out, the sister's third wedding. So, like, by the third wedding, I think you gotta like throw in the towel. Oh no! Come on now. That's <laughs> like you know, no. In terms of requests, you already oh, had okay, two good yeah. ones. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Fair. I take it back. I think that's fair. Like. Come on, like this. Sorry, is, like, re real quick. I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. not saying you're not allowed to get divorced and get another marriage. This is the the second time, so the third total. She is remarrying the same person. What? Huh? What? That's whoa, whoa, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Stop, at the stop, start stop, of the post, stop, says stop. I'm looking at the comments right now. She got married, and the sister wasn't at the first marriage. Then she did another wedding with the sister included. And now is remarrying the guy a, a second time, three total. Are you okay? So it's not like a vow renewal. It's just they got divorced twice. No, they never got divorced. She's just doing a remarriage ceremony. Uh, okay. What? I. Uh, what? Uh, some people just have too much money, I think, is what's happening. I, like, at this point, <laughs> I think probably what, what she wants to do is throw a party. Like, yes. why, why do you need to get married? Just rent Wait. out a. Rent out a hall and throw a party. You don't need to make it a marriage that. Well, maybe you do if you want it to be like all about you. But there's, there's, you should just have a party and then you can keep the kid out of the party, which is, I think, probably what she might be trying to do here by being like, we don't want someone here who can't drink. Yeah, I think that's. I think th I yeah, thought about that exactly. earlier, where it's like maybe they just don't want a person there that cannot drink, and it's like, oh fuck off, like somebody there. Like, this, this also sucks, too, because, like, what if one of the adults there was, like, a recovering alcoholic or something, and they were, were going yeah, yeah, yeah. to choose not to drink, right? Like, that kind of – that attitude is just shitty in the first place. Mm -hmm. Like, you're only going to – allowed to be here if you're going to be drunk. Like, oh, fuck you. Like, that's so lame. I'm feeling like the uh, the Steven Universe character from the, the Butler sitcom. You people have too much money. Yeah. Just go. That's, <laughs> that's it. No, nah, this like, is – Like, have a party. You don't need to have your third marriage specifically to exclude a child. That doesn't have to happen. Just go have a party. I I I am creating the DSM seven, and I am diagnosing <laughs> this woman with uh terminal main character syndrome. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, it's such a good yeah. way to someday play. we will have yeah. we will have main character syndrome in the DSM. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and the treatment? Well, there's a locker with your name. On yeah, it. that's right. <laughs> yeah, you hear that gong? That's you stuck in there. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Wow. Do you want to vote? Do you want to vote? Decision time. Do you think this woman is the asshole? Three, two, one. No. no. The council has spoken. No, <laughs> absolutely. Throw a tantrum. Embrace your inner yeah, child. Yeah, in fact, I think you didn't throw enough of a tantrum. I think yeah, you should have been keep going more. <laughs> yeah, keep going. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, all right, this next one. So I asked you all not to look at this one, and I maintain that, and it's mostly because of the flare on this one, which we'll talk about as we get to. But this comes from No Pumpkin fifty one sixty seven. Uh, it's about two weeks old. And it is called, Am I the Asshole for Refusing to Look After My Neighbor's Kids 
in a medical emergency. Uh, huh. Now, okay. now before you before you get all upset, what if they're child okay. free? What if they just don't oh, want those oh. crotch spawns in their freaking house? <laughs> I built a man cave, and I don't want anyone wiping boogers on it. That's so true. I do not need any diapers on my Camaro. (laughs) You've you've managed to uh, create a a theme, a through line. (laughs) Yeah, I am to curate a a certain type of post. Um, Let me read you out what's happening in this one. I, F26, live in a block of new build apartments. New build apartments. Everybody moved in a year ago, so we're all getting familiar with our neighbors. There's quite a few families on my landing. We have a shared courtyard where the kids play in the summer so we can get chatting while the kids are playing. We've done favors for each other in the past, like formula and kid stuff, mainly me giving it out, but I try not to get too friendly. I have two kids myself, a two-year-old and an 11-month-old. I'm currently solo parenting as my husband's gone away for a few days to spend time with his family and friends. There's a mum group chat of the mums in the building who swap kids around and babysit each other's kids for a few hours and they rotate. I'm just a silent watcher, to be honest. I don't participate, and it's not something I'm comfortable with, and my kids can't communicate properly. Last night around 3 a.m., I get a knock on the door. Me and my kids are fast asleep. I ignore it as, one, I'm home alone, two, I'm not expecting company, and three, it's 3 a.m. Anyway, they wouldn't stop, and my kids were starting to wake up, so I look through the peephole, and I notice it's my neighbor. I open the door, and it's her and her boyfriend. Her two kids, she's nine months pregnant, and she's clearly in labor. They've got their hospital bags. They told me, please, can I take the kids until their sister gets there in an hour? I said, I'm sorry, but no. I don't want to be liable if anything were to happen to her kids under my care, and I don't want to risk waking mine up. I feel like this is something you need to plan ahead and not start door knocking hoping someone takes your kids in. I've got my hands full. With my two, there's no way I'm having another two running around my house at three in the morning. They are one in four. I know they aren't going to just sit and watch TV quietly. They call me evil and rude. The boyfriend got on to me saying what kind of mother watches another struggle. I feel like if my husband was around, he wouldn't speak to me like that. Am I the asshole? Jordan. Wow. Wow. Initial thought is I'm actually kind of 50-50 here. And the reason I'm 50-50 is because it's like, (sighs) it's three in the morning. This sucks. And it is going to disturb your comfort for a little bit. And, like, you are going to be responsible for another person's children out of nowhere Mm -hmm. that you were not expecting to be for an hour, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But then again, it is only an hour, and this woman is in labor. So can you have a sense of community, like, at least a little bit, (laughs) and and be there for your neighbor? Ah, I don't know. It's rough because, like, you know... I, I obviously don't know the situation for this person who asked the neighbor. Like, obviously, you'd want to, like, you know, you go down the chain of, like, people you'd want to leave your kids with, right? Like, family first, then maybe friends, and then maybe if you're desperate, like, a neighbor, right? And so maybe they're at, like, number three, and they needed someone, and nobody would answer the call. Well, but, notab- notably, I, I'm seeing that the sister was called and is coming over to look after the kids, they need someone to hold the kids in the interim between them leaving the house to go to the hospital and the sister arriving to take care of the kids. Uh, uh, okay, I'm also I kind of split. I guess I'll say I'm not split at sure. all. Okay, I, okay what's, what you got? <laughs> this is this is kind of wild to me. I I think you got to take the kids in. Like, uh, I'm I'm sorry. You know, if I was the owner of the manger when Christ came to see me, let me tell you that shit would have gone down different. But like, <laughs> it just seems like like this this woman is very clearly experiencing the the worst possible thing that can happen, which is she's in labor without really a plan as to what can be done. Um, there is like, I guess there is a scenario where you could call an ambulance and your husband could stay home with the kids until the sister gets here and then come to the hospital with you. But one then your husband maybe misses the birth of their child. And two, ambulances are expensive, you know? Um, maybe your insurance company is like, we didn't need to take an ambulance. Someone could have driven you. And you're not going to get an Uber while after your water has broken. Um, I think that it's I, it certainly sucks ass. And it is a huge fucking imposition. 
Like, I, I do think that downplaying it and being like, oh, it's not that big of a deal is not the right. Th- it's going to fucking suck. These are two kids, yeah. one yeah, of which yeah, yeah. is sub two, one is four. It's three in the morning. They're super up and excited. It's going to take time to put them to bed. Then you got to worry about four kids. Your night is functionally shot. But this is a family that, to my understanding, has spent a pretty substantial amount of time uh, trying to get integrated into a larger group of moms and a central community, of which you claim to be a part, coming to you in their most desperate hour, asking for a favor. And like, the favor is a little much, but I don't think I could turn them down. I think if someone came up to me with this problem and it was like, a neighbor that I'd spoken to and like we'd given each other formula or something over the course of uh, months of, of uh, having kids uh, live and play together it, for sure. I would do it. I mean, I'm thinking of people in my neighborhood who have kids um, that if they had an emergency and had to drop off kids with us, uh, we would definitely do it. And we have in the past now that I've, Jillian has taken kids for like an hour while someone came uh, to get something, but obviously they were a little more grown and it wasn't at three in the morning. Um, I just feel like, I also feel like there's some, not to like metagame this, but there's some weird questions in here where like, Mm. the mom is like, I do my best not to interact on the shared courtyard with other parents or be too friendly or anything like that. Yeah. And it's like, it seems uh, like she's trying to avoid responsibility to like well, not, maybe, not even responsibility. It's like she's avoiding becoming part of a shared community. Like yeah. it feels very yeah. like, yeah. Why would I? Why would I look out for your kids? Or why would I? You know, swap formula back and forth. Um, you know, I got mine. And then these people come to her house and they're like, "Can you please help us?" And she's like, "Why? That's not my problem." And like, no, it's not your problem. I guess, but this is one of the worst positions you can possibly be in. And I feel like it takes an immense amount of vulnerability to be like, we need help from someone who is sort of a stranger. Could you please give it to us? And it is really frustrating to hear back. Like, sorry, it's like late. I don't want to do that. You know? Okay. I think I'm actually going the other way the more that I think about it. I'm going to be real. Because, like, here's the thing. Mm. I do agree that you should be the type of person that leans into a sense of community But it is, like, 3 a.m., and clearly you have not interacted with this person in such a way where you can lean on them for an emergency. Like, a complete, basically, functionally a complete stranger that you don't know. All of a sudden, it's like, I do not know you. We have not interacted at all. We have not established this rapport to lean on you in this serious of an emergency. Can you take my kids? It's like, I don't know you like that. Like, I don't know you like that. It's 3 a.m. There are other people in this mum group chat that you clearly know. Like, well, you got to ask yourself then, why do you think they're not going to those people? I mean, I like probably they already asked and they were like, no. (sighs) Or they weren't available or whatever. Like, like, clearly, I I, I kind of agree with Joseph that, like, this is there's a reason you are literally the last resort. Uh, like unless this happens like again or something or like this is a common occurrence to me this feels like a mega last resort you went mm-hmm. through the mum group chat you've tried the people near nearby and none of them are there none of them were there for you so you try you know maybe i haven't talked to that late that that woman much yeah. with the kid with the baby but maybe she'll be nice and maybe she'll help let's do, we we got to try it just anyone you know like yeah there you're right there is a sense there's a sense of at the end of the day, whether you know a person or you don't, they are, I mean, they are leaning on you for the most vulnerable thing ever, which is, can you watch my children? Yeah. You know, for like, an hour, by the way, you, you don't, you don't leave your kids with someone if you don't feel yeah. like you have to. Right. Gosh, I'm so on the fence. I'm just, I, I, I will, Ugh. I will sweeten the pot maybe, or just explain my thoughts. Uh, mm-hmm. I, uh, I, the more Joseph talked about it, the more I personally also would now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, oh, you know, I would also 1 million percent, 1000 percent take these kids. Um, I, there's no doubt in my mind that like, if I spoke with a neighbor once or twice, and they knocked on my door at 3am me personally, this is, you know, I understand this sucks. 
for this person. No, it's it's out of the way. It blows. It's and you have every right to say no. But to me personally, like unless this person is trying to take advantage to, of me for an hour at 3 a.m., which, you know, from reading from this scenario, it doesn't feel like it. But I'm going to guess they're not. And I would do this. I would 100 percent be like, of course. So let me know yeah, you get to the hospital. Uh, OK, I'll be here. Like, do not worry. I will. I will make sure your the, kids are okay. The sister's coming. Like you're gonna have the yeah, kids for an hour. That is true. I'm just what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to like I know what I personally would do in this situation. Like, but you don't want to impart that onto the other person. I I, I know I'm I don't want to impart right. that on the other person. I get I'm that. trying to keep in mind the justifications for this is super uncomfortable. What you are asking to do, mm -hmm. but yeah, of course it is. They're in like one of the deepest emergencies ever. And they are asking one of the most, like, dangerous things ever, which is, I don't know you. Can you watch my kids? Like, that, they're, clearly, they are very desperate. And there is a level of desperation that a stranger gets to where it is your duty as a human being to be a member of their community and help them, right? Like, what I would do, you know, something that's happened in my personal life. There's somebody that had, like, a mental health emergency outside of my house at a very late hour and they rang our doorbell and of I own a ring doorbell whatever and like I stepped out of the bar I was at with my friends and dropped everything to try to talk to them and figure out how I could help them right I'm not sucking my own dick here I'm just using no a personal you're, experience that's right like what I would do you know agreed. if somebody is experiencing a emergency and I would help this person well, not to not to bring it back to uh, uh, but not to bring it back to what we talked about last week relative to um, you remember the woman with the tattoo. Uh, I a lot yes. of the responses yeah. to this are echoing that same type of sentiment where they're like, "You don't owe this woman anything. You know, it's not your problem. It's oh, theirs. Yes. Mind your business." Oh, and that sucks. And well, yeah. yeah, and I think I think unfortunately it is true. It's not her business. You know, it's not her problem. But what really irritates me about this story is this is a story about a um a person who is doing everything she can to avoid developing a community. She's like, I'm just not going to talk to these other mothers uh, in the group chat. I'm not going to, you know, uh, swap around with the other mothers when it comes to, like, uh, looking after kids. I'm not going to arrange play dates. And it's just like, to what end? Why? Why, why do you demand to be this isolated and is the payoff that you get to turn down these people at 3 a.m that's like that's that's the juice yeah it just sucks it sucks and yeah i don't know i i understand it's a a huge fucking commitment and it's ridiculous to ask but i just don't think that they would be asking a clearly ridiculous thing unless they really needed help yeah that's that's really true that's the thing that is pulling me to the side of thinking this poster is the asshole is the fact that like nobody asks you to watch their kids if they are not in the like you as a functional stranger they don't ask you that if they are not in their like most desperate state right clearly this family is as desperate as they can get and they need some like they need a miracle which is a person watching their kids for a fucking hour and like you gotta and it just is someone you know like you maybe don't talk to them a ton but you're in group chats with them they're on the same playgrounds as you they live in your building on your floor you know See, that's they're the not I a think complete these commenters stranger. these commenters are missing is like they they think that this is like a complete and utter stranger they've never met this person which is literally not true she says we've done favors for each other like all of these people she's she has at least looked at these people and they all moved in together at the kind of same time at this like new building. So like there was a quick sense of like a little bit of, com you know, camaraderie or group, you know, community just because like, eh, we all moved in at the same time. Even if you don't know each other much at all, like at least like there's something rather than nothing. It's not, it's not like you walked up to a stranger walking on the street, you know, watch my kids. Like yeah. that's kind of insane. But like, this is, I I I want to preface like it's you know you are allowed to make this choice I get it you have your own issues you have your own family you have your own life 
and you're you you can say no it's and you know what that's that's just the way of the world but um i i do i do think it kind of sucks a little bit yeah this uh it's tough wow. it's okay. a tough one right, this is a tough yeah. one. decision time decision time all right uh danny where are you landing Honestly, I was really 50-50 at first. I didn't know how to react. At first, you kind of want to feel for this person and be like, oh, well, dang, that's that's rough. And then as we talked about it more, I was like, no, this to me, it's it's very clear that this person is is the asshole for me. This is a bit of an asshole. Uh, a d- a disclaimer, you know, it's a hard situation. This is tough. I I don't even blame them for saying no, but I, I will call them a bit of an asshole. Uh, well, you all know where I am. I am I am on the asshole train. I will say I, I love the the concept that like there's a scenario where they say no, um, and they did end up saying no is very funny to me because like what's gonna happen the next time you see the kids, like or the parents <laughs> or like any of the other people on the floor, like what are they gonna say? I feel like <laughs> there's gonna be social <laughs> ramifications to this. Uh, Jordan, how you feeling? I mean, this this was close to being the first time I dissented away from the majority opinion, Ugh. but I, I I I can't not put myself in this situation. Like mm-hmm. it's hard. I'm yeah. I'm too good of a person. Oh, poster. Yeah. Oh, I am. I am then. just a better person than you. No, <laughs> no, no. I do. It sucks because it's one of those situations is where like, I do get it. I do get it. Yeah. Because I yeah. hate it when things interrupt my sleep. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Like no, I know no, that sounds... I, I'm only laughing because it's so, you're so real. Like you're just like, <laughs> oh my sleep. <laughs> I I fucking hate losing sleep. I, no, it's I, just I one of the it. things about me that's like my I don't know flaw. I, whatever. But no, it's, it's just right. it. You're real. It uh it uh this is a situation where you do just have to realize that you are not alone in the world and that you have a responsibility to other humans, whether you think you do or not, and you are an asshole for not helping them out here. Damn. Did you expect a, a swift 3-0 on this, Joseph? No, no. I thought it, I thought it was going to be a close one. The council has spoken. I like these close calls. I will yeah. say this person is all, like the reason I didn't want you reading this one is uh, twofold. Firstly, there is an edit that says uh, that the sister actually wasn't there in an hour. It took her several hours to get there. Um, and the second is. This person in the comments is basically just revealing that she is a a psychopath and like one like is not fit for entry into human civilization. And everyone's like, oh, the sister didn't come, huh? How convenient for you. Like, it's clear that she made up her mind about what she wanted to do. And then, you know, the facts became whatever they had to be to justify that conclusion. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Wait, definitely. She said that the. Uh, the sister didn't come for longer. She got like a wave of you're the assholes and then was like, oh, well, guess what? The sister didn't show up actually for a couple of hours instead of one hour. Um, okay. And, oh, yeah. oh, I so will. Now, the, oh, now. So this one was flared us. with not the asshole from uh, the geniuses at reddit.com. But I honestly, I don't know how they come to these conclusions for the flare because it is really split in the comments. It's like, hugely upvoted people who were like uh no but it's close and hugely upvoted people that are like yes but it's close didn't we find out that it's it's just because the like the most top rated post is not it's the actually asshole. up dudes to the left yeah yeah because awesome. it's just whichever one reaches the top cool. i believe <laughs> I'll, right. I'll check it again but um the top one is yeah. not the <laughs> asshole yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but again, it says it's like, ah, but it's close, man. You know, you could have done something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. This next one comes from r slash relationships. And, ah, man, I, you know, it's a good, it's a good reminder that despite the fact that we are, we're, we're spring chickens in the grand scheme of uh, life, you know, we're still in our 20s. Uh, sometimes <laughs> the, the insecurities of, being alive they don't go away with time today we have two middle-aged individuals this comes from Ooh, solid unravel okay. okay about a week ago this is a locked post by the way my wife 45 f and i 46 m yeah 
to take that. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah thanks, All man. Right, cool. no, Are, no more posts of 31M. 23F. <laughs> Me, 13F, and my boyfriend, 41M, are having a rocky time in our relationship. Uh, no, um, two, two adults. Uh, I think, though, they are still millennials, right? So, you know, they're probably arguing Why about Funko Mama Pops or something. Toast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, my wife and I could not be in the same city on Valentine's Day, so she had dinner with a coworker. And I need a reality check to see if I'm overreacting. All right. Mm. Okay. So, don't, okay. All right. All right. Background info. We've been married 18 years. We have kids. We don't seem to want the same things out of marriage. I believe she likes me and is fully committed, but being in a romantic relationship is just not a big part of her identity, whereas my relationship with my wife and kids are the most important part of me. We've never Wait, had many... Uh, what? So what he's saying here is the most important defining part of his life is his relationship with his wife and kids, whereas she is a person who has a husband and children, but considers herself an independent person with, like, her own lifestyle and goals. Okay. Okay, okay. So I think this is she's... pretty understandable, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, she, yeah. Okay, she, all right. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. If you, you want to okay. use, use, like, HR speak, she's more career-oriented than he is. Yeah, uh, correct. Yeah, 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 sure. Correct. Okay. We've never had many dates together, partly because she travels frequently and often goes out to eat as part of her job. So it's not a special thing for her. However, last night was not a work dinner. It was social with a coworker whom she seems most chummy with. I don't know anything about the guy's intentions, but they are both attractive and they have appealing personalities. He's also traveling, so he too was away from his family. She called while I was making dinner for our kids. So I just asked what her plans were and she told me. I wouldn't have thought much of it if it was a different day. But isn't it weird to have dinner with another guy on Valentine's Day? Doesn't it have a certain appearance? I didn't know how to react, so I changed the subject. But when she was saying goodbye, I said, enjoy your date. Maybe to let her know I was a little hurt and I needed to process. She sounded deflated, not expecting me to be upset, and said, you want me to eat by myself. Like she was already resigned to canceling with the guy. I trust her. I have no interest in trying to control anyone. So I told her to just go, and I assume she did. She called about an hour later, but I didn't answer because I still felt hurt. I know she didn't mean anything by going out, but I didn't feel like I could pretend it didn't bother me. And if I didn't tell her it bothered me, I would feel like I was making too much out of it. Am I blowing this out of proportion? How would you react? She's never taken Valentine's Day that seriously. Maybe she gets me a card or nothing at all, but I always try to do stuff to make it a little special. I don't think anything's going on with them. I'm 98% certain my wife would not cheat on me. That's not what this post is about. It's about me checking to see if I am being irrational here. Would you think anything of it if your spouse did this? I would have at least expected her to have mentioned going out with someone on Valentine's without me having to ask, but I think their plans were so casual it didn't register with her that I could be bothered by it. TLDR, wife went out with someone else on V-Day not thinking much of it. I wonder if it's an overreaction for me to be bothered. Thanks for reading. Any insight is appreciated. Oh. Oh, baby. Can wow. I go first? Yes, 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 of course. Yeah. Okay. You are absolutely... Completely normal feeling this way. Thank you, you are, God. Yes, absolutely, yes. it's completely you normal are, you, for you. It to is feel not a freakish. Day. No, you are a human being. This is absolutely okay. You can feel this way. It is. It's actually good. You feel this way. It yes. means you love your wife. It means <laughs> yep. you want them. You want more attention. You want more time with them. And it's it's coming out like this. And it sucks. The feeling sucks. It's okay. You're not being irrational. It's just, it's just you, dude, and it's completely fine. It's, it's all of us. Well, I do want to kind of, I, I want to preface. I think there's some stuff in here that mm. we can talk about, right? Okay. Uh, about oh, like, oh yeah, about cool. oh, for how, sure, it for was, sure. <laughs> how it was, how it was handled, sure. uh, oh, yeah, what everyone's yeah, yeah. intentions are. Sh- but I, whatever. I do want to agree at bottom. I don't think his wife is cheating on him. I don't think nah, yeah. that they're in some sort of loveless marriage. I think the guy is 100% within his rights to be skeeved out about this. And I think instead of like confronting his wife and being like, why the fuck are you doing this? Instead, trying to be like, hey, is this like a valid way to feel about this? I think that's a good impulse. You know, I appreciate yes. that in a guy. Um, so I will say kind of at bottom, sure, you're, you're, you're fine. <laughs> this is not that big of a deal. No. 
Now, I will say the way he handles now! this. Yeah, I mean, let's get into the nitty gritty. The, come on, dude. You can't, you can't be talking like this. Oh, my God. Baby. You're 45. 46. <laughs> He's 46. He was like, enjoy your day. <laughs> oh, come on. No, fuck you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm standing behind my man. Like, I'm, I would be a little annoyed by this. And you, you can, can't just not be annoyed you can you like, can be annoyed you don't have to be a passive aggressive little yeah. bitch about it yeah oh, whatever fuck you i would absolutely no if he <laughs> like uh, i didn't know we had a representation oh, or damn. a representative from yeah. team whiner in the chat yeah, team passive yeah, aggressive over you, here dude <laughs> it's oh, hey. valentine's hey, day hey well hold up P say that with your chest say i want to hang out with valentine's day and exactly. i feel like up i'm upset about this this okay, is upsetting me. He's telling us You're on 40. Reddit. No, it, it's, he can say that too, but but like, he didn't. Yeah, okay, yeah he, he did been not. More confident, but I didn't. He didn't. Sure, but it's ridiculous to be like he shouldn't have said anything at all. Like, come on. I, who's saying he shouldn't have who said anything that? at all? I think what he should have said is, "You're going out on Valentine's Day with another guy." That's kind of weird. Okay, sure. That's functionally what he said. I don't no, care that he was. No, what he said, what he said was no. nothing. And then, as she was hanging up, tried to get in the last word with a little snide little bit, and he went, "Enjoy your day." And then, and I'm glad he did. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh fine. my god. No, this is this is not no, how you communicate on. with your partner. This is like I don't care. I'm sorry. It's weird to be like, it's Valentine's Day. I'm going to go have dinner with a coworker. I'm not saying she's cheating. I agree. I agree with you with all that shit. But yeah, okay, it sucks to be passive aggressive. But when you're hurt by something, sometimes you just respond in a way that's not appropriate. And yeah, sometimes that's okay. It's okay to say okay, something so was, that might was, not was be the way he way responded, respond. was the way he responded inappropriate? Or are you glad that he responded that way? I don't know, both. Both. Uh, uh, both are true. <laughs> you, yes, I, both are true. Well, no, asshole, think, we I, have the benefit of hindsight. So if this happened to you, would you just be like, le okay, let's, let's think about this. Let's think about this logically for a second. <laughs> his sneaking suspicion is that his wife is cheating on him. If your wife is cheating on you with another man brazenly enough to tell you that she is going to dinner with another man on Valentine's Day, and your response is, oh, well, just enjoy your date then. That woman is going to think, boy, I made the right decision cheating on this guy. No, I'm sorry. That's ridiculous, dude. This guy is hurt. Are you mad at him for being then hurt? Then tell I'm sorry, his hurt. partner he is hurt. <laughs> yes, I He agree has been with that, married please. to this woman for 18 years. They have three kids. If she does something that hurts him, you don't act like a fucking middle schooler about it. Or you can't, I'm sorry, the initial reaction of, wow, this kind of sucks. Like, well, no. I don't blame him for acting, like, hurt. But that's, that's what he's no, doing. No, 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 Jordan, that's different. That's different. That's different. We, both me and Joseph, can absolutely understand why he reacted that way. Of course, it is completely understandable. We're not saying that it doesn't make sense. Absolutely. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone says shit in the moment. Everyone doesn't it acts maybe acts like a brat once in a while and says something yes. that's rude or mean. We I think you're just missing our point. We're just saying this guy did this that that we have the benefit to look at this situation objectively from afar away and say the way he handled this was not good. Was it understandable? Yes. What did it make sense? Yes, of course. He didn't know how to use he didn't know how to communicate in this moment. He got heated and said this snide little remark. Mm -hmm. And that's probably not cool, even mm -hmm. if it makes sense and is understandable. It's still not cool. You still kind of have to recognize and say, because at the end of the day, when you do have the conversation, you go back and say, you know, honey, uh, when I made that snide remark, that was kind of rude of me. I am sorry about that. I was hurt and I and it just happened. Please understand yeah. that. I, I okay sure so sure that's I agree what we're that saying. he that's what we're yes, saying yes okay I'll land I'll get with you there that maybe he should address that but I don't think the onus is on him to feel bad about that remark I think the onus is on the wife to be like why am I dis like why am I not even asking about Valentine's Day if it's something important to you that kind of stuff okay that's like, wait that's sure, not fair sure, that's but, not but fair that's, either because you're you're assuming that like 
oh, Valentine's Day is super important to this guy. But they have been married for 18 years and never made a big deal about Valentine's Day. I don't think Clearly, it's that— Clearly, he has made an effort to, like, do stuff on Valentine's Day, though. Well, you he, know he, what? He, like... if, he, if he wanted her to make an effort, you know a way to do that would be to tell her that instead of sure. communicating with little asides to the audience. I, I don't know. Like, listen, listen, I'm sorry. When a person is hurt, they act in a way that isn't great. Sure. Yeah, All right. Dumb fine. This guy responded in a way that, that. isn't great. <laughs> we agree. I know you are, but you're making it sound like the onus is on him to apologize for the snide remark. The, rather than no, the onus he does on need no, to apologize like, for this remark. This is a stupid, bratty thing to do. Even I, if totally, he's... I totally disagree. Wow, I really holy fuck. do you, you want him so you so you think at, that it is objectively correct to respond this way? No, I don't think it's objectively you correct think to, it respond is wrong this way. to respond this way. To respond this way to someone you love, how do you make it right? You apologize. You talk to I them think about she it. She should apologize first. Oh my what? god. You, really you, are, you are the guy That's in this story. Separate... You fucking wrote this. I know you wrote this. <laughs> That's a so I'm issue. serious. No, dude. But you're, you're conflating two different issues. Yes, she is absolutely in the wrong for other things here. Sure, yeah. definitely. We can talk about both. Why why does that have to do with one with the other? We're focusing right now on what the guy did for this. I absolutely agree that this woman obviously is missing the signs that this guy is putting out that he does a lot of the, you know, he's helping with the kids. He's, he doesn't have his wife on Valentine's day. He kind of gets her guards. She doesn't like he puts in the effort. She has her own problems. She's got to communicate with him too. We're just saying that the snide remarks do not help. And you know, when you c come in for the dialogue, both, Frickin' party's got to come in and say, okay, sorry for acting the way I did. That was kind of childish. And he goes, sorry, you're right. I went out with a guy on Valentine's Day. That was weird of me. I should have communicated to you. I should have talked to you. Like, there's two separate things. Don't conflate them. We can recognize the issues with the guy and say that he made a mistake and is okay feeling that way and understandable he made the mistake. Like, he's not even that, like, wrong for doing it it's just the way he did it is wrong obviously mm -hmm. he's right to to put out feelers and say i was hurt that was not cool blah 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 it's a small thing but it hurts and it's you know it's like you know the way i said that was mean that was really mean of me to say enjoy your date that was like uncool <sighs> but, okay listen i think you are just such an interesting little creature to be so in previous <laughs> episodes like why can't people talk to each other and then yeah. jump to the defense of the back half of a phone call that goes exactly <laughs> like this. Oh, I didn't tell you. I'm going because out with another guy on Valentine's Day. Oh, we'll enjoy your date then. Long sigh. Ugh, you want me to eat by myself. You know what? Just go. Hang up. An hour later, she calls back and he doesn't pick up because he wants her to know that he's pouting. That is not communication. That is trying to land Reddit-style digs at each other. And Fuck you, dude. I'm sorry. There is a level of hurt that a person can be where it doesn't really matter how they respond. Like, oh my this God. is something that would hurt me so bad as to I would. It doesn't matter. Like, I you have agree. a different relationship with your wife than this guy has with his. I, I do agree that you do need time to process your feelings. And even if you do it in a petty way, like it, it's, you know, you'll suffer the consequences, but you need that time. But if you are if out. you are massively like, hurt by the actions of another person and you react in a way that is I'm sorry childish when you reconcile with that person when you have a conversation about how the pair of you hurt each other are you apologizing for your baby ass comments I am but Sure fine that's Well then why are you leaping the to this is, guy's I, defense Because I don't blame him for acting this way in the moment but neither oh are my we. God. <laughs> Like, the thing is, like, okay, neither, all three of us, all three of us do not blame him for this response. No. No. Okay, then somebody has to take ownership of, I hurt you, I'm sorry that I hurt you, and then we can move on with the discussion of, I'm sorry that I reacted the way that I did. It's we gonna have, have to be both of them. That's fine. You can't, you That's are, fine. these two are adults, you cannot be like, this will be resolved when one of us admits he started it. That is not how this works. Because then you do blame, but then you're doing blame battles, right? Yes. Like, then you're yes. being like, okay. Yeah, sure I am. <laughs> Why do you want to? I would Jordan, never, I, I, don't think, I think we, do have, we have located another problem. 
don't, don't, I don't want to do, I don't want to do this like fight between like, well, I'm going to wait until like I become the, the victim in this situation and I'm a, I feel better to then apologize for my actions. No, you like, you can understand like, I, cause I, I can get these moments where if like I get upset or something and I can recognize, I'm like, damn it, I'm doing the bad thing. Like I know I shouldn't. And I could go, listen, I'm hurt. I did this thing cause I was hurt. I'm sorry. And they go, I'm so sorry I hurt you. That wasn't cool of me. There's no blame there. There's no like, well, like, so oh, I think what, finally, like, I got blamed first. You know what I mean? I think what Jordan's trying to I, say is guess, someone's going to yeah. have to be like, first say, I'm sorry I hurt you to like start that process of conversation. But I don't think that's true. I think it's as simple as being like, hey, can we talk about what happened yesterday? I felt hurt yes. that you didn't do the Valentine's Day thing. Right. I'm sorry right. I reacted the way I did, but it's important to me that you communicate these things to me. Right. This day does have significance yes. to me. And then the other person I, says, I, agree with that. I didn't understand that. I'm sorry I hurt you in this way. What you said did hurt me. I thank you for apologizing. Um, All of this I agree with. Now, where I stop agreeing with is when we jump to making fun of this guy for a baby snide comment. No, I do I'm, not like that. I'm I'm sorry. No, this this he comment is, is ridiculous. He's able to be hurt. You do like I I I, I get it. I get it. I I, I maybe jumped too quickly regard, to make fun of the comment. I get it. It's more understandable. It's I, I just wanted to riff a bit. It's a little. It's a. It sounds kind of childish. No, like I you have to admit. No, I I'm sorry. You I I think that. If you want to be able to communicate with each other about this kind of thing, you can't be you can't be ending phone calls with with I'm gonna get the last word in. Like that's just that's that's awful. It is it is it's pretty. It's a terrible way to talk to someone you love. It's a very upsetting thing to me. If if my partner, it is a terrible way to talk to somebody you love. But it happens sometimes. Sure. Yeah. When it happens, it's bad. One another. Yes, it is. But it doesn't mean that he's a bad person. It is so I'm crazy that these these two are these two are having person. a continuous problem where they want different things out of the relationship. <sighs> they are not able to communicate those things. Here is an example of that lack of communication in front of us, and you're like, "Yeah, but I'm not going to blame anybody though. That's just crazy." That's a... uh, th look, I can't jump to make fun of this guy for this. People are hurt, and they say things <sighs> that they probably didn't mean when they're hurt. We agree with that. Well, yes, but we all just agree. Jumping to make fun of this guy or jumping to. I'm not to... making fun of this guy. I am dude. making like, fun of this come guy. Come on, he's talking oh to my me. God. That's <laughs> fucking ridiculous to me. I what? Like being the... together for 18 years doesn't mean you're immune to hurting one another or being hurt. To That's mean true. We constantly have to perfectly communicate with each That's other true. all the time. I understand that no matter how long or how advanced your relationship gets. You can still very easily hurt each other or be hurt. I think you cannot, to a person that you care about, be responding like a high schooler. I'm sorry. This is like, I get it. I get that like people do and say irrational things when they are hurt. Doing passive aggressive, silly little things to me smacks of the type of behavior that is learned uh, by people who are so conflict averse. The Hello Fresh guy from the Patreon episode, like <laughs> dozens of the guys that we've talked about, that instead of confronting problems, yeah. hand wave them away with stupid like, huh, well, I wish you told me that type discussion. Oh, like the like the PB and J guy. Exactly like yeah. the fuck you said, Hello Fresh, but I forgot that it's the, it's the same guy. Oh, but that guy was hurt because he was unfull. No, like that I know dude, that this I'm sucks. Sorry. I know that this sucks. It doesn't oh, give you license so to be a fucking redditor. How is it different? They no, both used manipulative tactics to uh uh like subtly and passively aggressively this say the not... meals are not enough and the this uh, this I want Valentine's What you're doing Day is wrong you. without saying what you're doing is wrong. Instead, what he's saying is, okay, well, you should know what you're doing is wrong. Scenario. You should go, go get your date. The fact that you think this is manipulative to me is like crazy. The fact that you and cannot I... see that this is a manipulative statement is crazy to me. Hanging up the well, phone call with 18 years, mother of your children, huh, enjoy your date. What is, how is she supposed to respond to that? Do you think her emotions are going to be manipulated by that conversation? Maybe by fact that, like, she literally does change her behavior as a result of that stupid fucking snide remark.
You know oh it's going to hurt her. You know that he Cindy's said it to hurt. hurt her. He said it because to hurt her. Because he was hurt. I don't yes, give a I fuck. You're 45. If you are do, hurting you your partner in response to being hurt, then you are a child. No, <laughs> you are conflating irrationality with immaturity. That is crazy to me. Just because a person is 45 or 46 does not mean they get they don't get to be irrational anymore. Are you serious right now? You can be like, irrational all you want. You can go fucking punch your pillow all you want. But when you use that irrationality to hurt another person, then it no longer becomes this self-serving thing. It becomes a cycle. And you break that cycle by discussing with your partner, which this man is not doing, instead relying on stupid fucking one-liners. And so like, in a like, state of irrationality, when he was hurt, he was supposed to go... I'm going to turn into a stone face Maui statue. He and I'm wasn't gonna say, supposed to hit I'm going to be the calm, rational. No, you're not no, 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 no. Yes, he was not supposed to hit back, but he did because he was hurt. And that's what people do sometimes. Well, yes, we all understand that people go crazy sometimes and do something wrong. But we can also look back and say, that wasn't that was cool, wrong dude. to do. That was passive aggressive of you. You gave her the silent treatment. That was oh. also uncool. What? Like, how is this not clicking? It's just it is clicking. I understand that they are going to need to communicate to get out of this situation and resolve it. I agree with that, but I am not going to be furious furious at somebody for how they act in the moment when they are hurt. Okay, no one's no one's mad at this guy. We think that he behaved like a child and came off looking shitty, and I completely and fundamentally disagree because you you say he acted like a child i don't think he acted correctly but i certainly would not say that he acted like a child how many fucking 17 year olds do this i'm not i'm done i don't mean to focus on semantics i i understand how you gotta say that i focus on semantics but i don't i don't want this to be semantic because i would say like just this happens with people and if you go this constant butting of the heads of like oh, well, he reacted badly because I did a bad thing or I didn't ask him about this. or what? It's just this butting of heads. And at the end of the day, somebody has to go, I'm sorry that you were hurt. I'm sorry that I hurt you. And I just, I can't believe that the response is this guy, like the focus right away is this guy shouldn't have said that. Like, Okay, I, wait, I, you, you, are, you are correct. This is never going to resolve unless the pair of them get together and have real honest conversation. I think we can all agree with that, right? Yeah. Right, I, I think agree. our major disagreement for some unbelievable reason is that you find it appalling that we would ask the guy to come to the table first instead of the girl. I did say that and I don't agree with that because now I'm emotional in the argument. But <laughs> Oh but, my god. <laughs> yeah, no. But uh I, well, enjoy your I, fucking I, date. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I just I just don't I, I can't come to the side of the argument that we're having here of this guy is like irrevocably in the wrong for responding no, this way. No one no one is saying this guy is irrevocably in the wrong. No one's saying this guy uh, we led this entire okay, segment. So, you know what? Let me just take a step back. I need yeah. to cool down. Let me take a step back. Okay. What okay. are you saying? Yeah. So we we led this entire thing by saying the guy's doing a lot of things right, like checking in, making sure that this is weird. And I think we all mm -hmm. agree this is weird. The wife shouldn't be having dinner on Valentine's Day with another man. I understand Valentine's Day isn't important to her. The guy doesn't know how right. Valentine's Day is for the other guy. And I, I think that it was remiss of her to not discuss it with him. Uh, that was just the conclusion of where we are with this post. Afterwards, we say, that said, you did respond in a snide, passive-aggressive way that is not going to improve this relationship in any sort of capacity. And that you're going to have to unlearn those habits if you want to have genuine communication with this woman. I think that is completely reasonable to work on yourself, because that's what we're saying, that this guy said this mean thing, was gave the silent treatment, after we disclaimed it with all of the things. Yeah, thank you for putting said. words to that. It is the silent treatment that he's doing. Yes, it is. It's the silent treatment. Like this is, you, you know, when you and, and it is understandable 
we're on, we're in this guy's corner. We I get, get it. Hurt. It's normal to feel this way. It's completely okay to feel this way. It happens. Irrationality happens. We said this. We're it's okay. We're not even like I'm riffing for the show for the most part, but like you know, it's it's completely normal. Like and and this is completely normal to do that. Yeah, like yep. it's completely understandable. And even if it's understandable, if I did this, I'd walk back and say, you know, what I said was really uncool of me. And I ignored you. That was uncool of me. Really. It was ups- I knew it would upset you. And I did it. Which is anyway, why he did it. Sorry. He says that's why I did it. Because yeah. I, I wanted <laughs> yes. her to know I was upset with me. Right. Yes. I, I think right. that what we're seeing here on display, this type of behavior, it is irrational. And I, you know, I talk about it like it's it's for babies and for high schoolers. But the reason that I'm characterizing it in those terms is because this is a type of behavior that we have seen, I think, a dozen times from guys on the show. It's this weird type of like non-aggressive, like um, very couched in subtlety sort of I am going to hint that you are not fulfilling me. It's the same type of like mm-hmm, frustrating sure. self-depreciation that I think permeates the psyche of, like, the Scott Pilgrim guy, for instance. And when guys act like this, it frustrates me because while it isn't like, I'm not saying this guy is abusing his partner or whatever, but he is Mm -hmm. trying to get what he wants by acting like a little baby. And I think it is a direct impediment to their ability to have a genuine conversation. This woman is not blameless. She definitely has way overstepped a lot of boundaries. But until that guy communicates the boundaries clearly, instead of being super passive aggressive all the time about what they are and hoping she infers them, they're not going to be able to have any sort of realistic conversation. I want to preface also these, we mm. the, like Joseph said, most of the p- uh, guys we've seen on this like show are like insane or like crazy and they and they're like I don't they steal legs and stuff and you're like that's that's you know th- these people are nuts but this is a much realer scenario with a bit of truth we've found connecting the dots between them uh, and luckily I mean, this feel guy for this seems guy. if this happened this guy to me, I'd be pissed way, off I'd be so way mad. more yeah, savable way more savable than any of the other guys we found because oh yeah right so like that's what I'm saying is that, like, we all agree on that. It's just that this point seems similar to these other guys who can't communicate. And so here we have that moment. And me and Joseph are like, damn, dude, that was not cool of you to say in that <laughs> yeah. moment. Mm-hmm. I, I, the thing that the, – the reason I react so strongly to this, and because I definitely reacted strongly mm-hmm. to this, and I stand oh, by man. that. It's okay. Is – is this is a, a a genuine guy in a genuine relationship that they're going on almost 20 years and have had kids. kids and clearly he cares so much about his partner and after years and years and years of this you know this this part of him that's not being fulfilled in this relationship which yes it would be better if they talked about that whatever but it got to a point now where it just came to a head and all of a sudden on Valentine's Day, it, it, she's having dinner with another man. And rego- I, again, I want to totally stress, I also believe that, you know, she's not cheating or whatever shit like that, right? But it's weird. I just can't, I can't point the finger at, I, I can't make it the onus of the person that was hurt to own up to a sort of, like, you know, uh, collaborative discussion here. Sometimes I just, I really, maybe, maybe I do believe that she's the person that should initiate the conversation to fix this. Like, I know mm-hmm. the silent treatment sucks. I know the silent treatment sucks. I know it's passive aggressive. It doesn't help. But we don't get to pick how the person we hurt responds to what we do. Sure, but and think about it. think about it this way. Yeah. Yes, maybe she can have the onus to do this, right? Maybe maybe she can and maybe she will. But we never know and we're not in her head, nor does she was she ever going to think this was an issue. So he lashes out this way and she can't read his mind, right? Yes, so I she'll agree. never be able to know what happened here because she can't see what's in his head. So it really is on him if if only if he wants to fix this. 
If he doesn't, then he can resent. He can leave it in his brain and his chest and yep. and sure. and not talk about it and say, you know what? I'll just ignore it. I'll put it in my feelings and bottle it up. But to me, that's why I think he has to, or he doesn't have to, but it, he he could be the guy to initiate here, right? Yeah, because no, I, he was hurt, right? He was the one lonely. He was the one yeah, feeling yeah, upset. Yeah. He needs to communicate that. If he didn't give a fuck about Valentine's Day, or he didn't give a fuck about like uh, the dates or whatever, and he actually trusted her and didn't give a shit, this would never be an issue. He wouldn't have any hurt because he'd right. have. There wouldn't be there. But the hurt's there, and the hurt's not going to go away unless he initiates. This is why I feel it's unfair uh, to the wife. Is because this hurt has been his own for so long, like. It's clear in this post, they haven't really done anything for Valentine's Day for 18 years. And from her position, she was like, oh, that must be fine, you know, because he's never said anything about it. But instead, he's been like, God, I really do like this day and I wish my wife did, but I've just suffered through it in silence. And so when (laughs) when he projects that suffering onto her, then, I mean, she's probably getting that call like, what the fuck? Like, what's going on? Like, I don't. Yeah. yeah. So, like, and like, imagine, imagine her in this scenario, right? Imagine her, peeps. Your, your, you know, you both of you and your husband never uh, celebrate Valentine's Day. You're, you're not used to it. He never says anything, so you're like, oh, I guess he just doesn't care about it. It's okay. I don't really care about it too much either. We don't ever have to talk about it. Valentine's Day comes up this year, and she's away for work, and I'm like, I'm so sorry, honey. I'm away from work. I'm flying away. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm with a coworker for dinner, whatever. Uh, we don't think about this. We don't give a shit about this day. So he won't care. So she, he calls and he's like, oh, you're out with another guy. And she's like, yeah, as a coworker, whatever. Um, what does she do to fix this? Do, is she, if he's upset about Valentine's Day and she figures it out in her head, is she, like she said, am I supposed to eat alone? Do you want me to fly home during this work trip? It's just like a lot of shit that, like, she knows she can't fix immediately, yes, right? So, like. Yeah, he knows all these things. And I mean, so it's it's tough. It's tough. Uh, okay, here's here's the thing. What I can't I can't I can't get past is sometimes there are just things that you should know will hurt somebody. I, and I know I know what you're going to say. I know well, he should have communicated blah blah, but I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Going out to dinner with another guy on Valentine's Day, regardless of how uncelebratory Valentine's Day is for the two of you, I I think that is no. just a line that you do not consider. Sorry, let me reiterate. And, let me reiterate. This woman yep. should not have gone out with another That's, coworker I, I, on I'm Valentine's not, Day. I, I'm not That's sorry. Insane. I wasn't saying that. I wasn't saying that to state that you disagree with that. Sure. One of the reason I brought that up is some. You you should you should have just known. Like I I know I again it's a completely emotive response that I'm giving, but as a partner you should have just known. I mean, okay? respectfully, known they've been dating that. for twenty years. Like, they know what the other, they at least think, they know what the other person wants more than any other person in the world does. And I, I just, I, I, a, I don't know. I get it. I, I get that it feels really bad. But I think the number one thing that has to happen is when this woman gets back from the trip, you got to be like, yo, we need to go immediately to a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 I love this discussion because I think it is. I, I don't know. I, I I even though it was an argument, it feels good to talk about because like <sighs> it uh, you know I, there it, are just gonna be people that view things differently throughout the years, and it is just important to check in with your partner. Mm-hmm. Neither it's just important to check in with your partner, right? Like people's wants and interests like ebb and flow over time, and you you can't just assume that everything stays the same through almost 20 years of being together. Um, I don't know. The resolution of this is obvious. They need to communicate about it, right? But I... I, I don't think there's... I mean, I think they got to go to therapy. I don't think there's an outcome yeah. that doesn't include, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, marriage yeah. counseling here. But, yeah. yeah. It, but oh, for basically, not because this thing she did was so egregious, but because just as a cross-section of this marriage, I think we can all see it's like, it ain't working perfect. Just go to fucking therapy. Go to counseling. It's not yeah. that big of a deal. Yeah. 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 And like that, and that's the thing too, is this marriage is not like bad. No, it's not bad, like, but it's clearly like clearly they're doing pretty good. Yeah, but you two like, clearly don't feel like feel like completely fulfilled. I, all you need is a person in the room to be like, all right, talk to each other. <laughs> you <Yeah>. fucking moron. <laughs> Just say <laughs> something. Ugh. Yeah. Uh okay. This was good. I like this. This was a, let's I guess let's put a bow on it. 
Decision time. Do we think this guy was being the asshole? Uh, three, two, one. Reddit. Three, two, one. No, 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 no. No, it's, it's no, normal. no, no. You're not overreacting. It's fine. But everyone here could be behaving better. The council has spoken. Oh my god. That yeah, was sure. Oh my god. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> that oh was. God, that, I I will you. say that was a nice one. I do. I do Ugh. think it is frustrating that. Uh, frequently I feel like I men are just sort of expected to just kind of grin and bear it with a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Um, mm. and one of the downsides to that is even in a relationship where you do feel respected and loved, um, it can feel like you don't have, uh, the authority to raise like these issues of like, uh, you know, your emotive health, health and stuff. Right. And, yeah. right. you Absolutely. know, I, I think that, I think that, you know, distancing yourself from that, that belief would, I mean, it'd help this guy out a lot. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. God, that was good. Oh. Felt good to argue with you two. I never get to do <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, we never get to do that. That shit rocks. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let me let me give you a, a little we'll, we'll give you a little hypothetical. So this man, as an apology, purchases for his wife a crock pot. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well all right. shit, I guess that's it. Uh anyone have any um any closing thoughts here? Anyone wanna rub one out real quick together? <laughs> 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 no uh no i gotta i gotta drink some uh i gotta drink some uh, uh some tea with honey to repair my throat after screaming at you two fucking morons yeah i'm gonna go <laughs> hug my wife or something i oof. yeah yeah, that's, what, yeah, yeah. that's actually what i'm gonna be like hey well, we're taking you... our dog to agility we're oh, our, our uh what? we're starting beginner's agility with our our second dog liba so are they gonna uh, gain two speed boosts Folks, agility oh. is a Pokemon move. Okay, we're done with the episode. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.